For many beginners, the half diminished or minor 7 flat 5 chord is a mysterious strange chord that's hard to understand and use, but in fact it's a very useful chord to have in your vocabulary. You can use it for the half diminished chords, but you can also use it for a lot of other really beautiful chord sounds like tonic minor, alter dominance and major 7 sharp 11 chords. In this video I'm going to cover how you construct a minor 7 flat 5 chord and also how you play them and how you use them in a song, not only as minor 7 flat 5 chords, but also for a lot of other beautiful chord sounds. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. So first I'm going to show you how you construct the chords and also how you can construct chord voicings for half diminished chords. And then I'm going to apply them to a song and I'm going to use Autumn Leaves because that's a really useful song for just demonstrating a lot of different sounds using these minor seven flat five chords. When we're constructing a minor 7 flat 5 chord, then let's just start with a minor 7 chord. So if we take an A minor 7, like this one, then really all that needs to happen is that we find the fifth in this chord and then move that down a half step because a half diminished chord is a minor 7 chord with a flat 5. So in this case, that means that I'm actually turning this A minor 7 into this. A minor 7 flat 5. Another common voicing that you can also easily change into a minor 7 flat 5 will be this one. So we have A minor 7 here, and then we're turning that into a flat 5 by taking the 5, so the E, and turning that into an E flat, and then we have. And this is a great way to take a basic minor 7 voicing and then turn it into a half diminished chord. And some really basic half diminished voicings that are all, in fact, drop 2, even though that's not so relevant for this lesson, would be this. And notice that these are actually the same, it's just a different string set. The first place that we associate with a half diminished chord is probably the minor 251. When we're talking about autumn leaves, then that means we can look at the second line where we have A half diminished to D7 to G minor. And an example of how that might sound could be something like this. So notice that I'm using this voicing for the A half diminished. And that's of course the same as this one, just on the top string set. And I'm using another melody note as well because I'm also adding the D, the 11, on top of the voicing once in a while, so... And then for the D7, it's just sort of diminished, so D7 flat 9, flat 13, and then resolving to G minor 6, 9. This example is using another inversion, so I'm using this voicing for the A half diminished, and just repeating that actually. Then using again D7 flat 13 and D7 flat 9, really just consistent with sort of the harmonic minor sound on top of the D7, and then resolving down to the G minor 6. And the thing you want to notice is that for the G minor 6, I'm using this voicing. And that's of course the same as this voicing. So that's also a half diminished chord, and that's because if we have A half diminished, then that's A, C, E flat and G. But if I make an inversion of that and start on the C, then it's C, E flat, G and A. And that's a C minor 6. So whatever voicing I'm using for A half diminished, I can also use for a C minor 6. And that of course also means that I can use E half diminished for a G minor 6. Another thing to notice is that since this is a G minor 6 and a half diminished, an E half diminished voicing. Then of course the first one that I played in example 4A, which was this one, is also really derived from an E half diminished voicing. And again I'm adding the 11 and that means that this idea of having the 11 in there, this note, on the E half diminished is something that's giving us useful extensions on other chords as well as you'll see later in the examples. The next thing to check out now that we have these voicings that we can use for half diminished chords, but also for minor six or tonic minor chords, is to look at how they work as dominant voicings. So if we start with the A half diminished here, so the A minor seven flat five, then again the notes of an A minor seven flat five would be A, C, E flat, and G. But if I play that over an F, 
So we have this bass note. Even if I'm not playing that in the chord, we just leave that to the bass player. Then I have A is the third, C is the fifth, E flat is the seventh, and G is the ninth. So I have an F7 with a nine. The first example here is starting with this C minor seven voicing and then just using the melody note that's really close to it so it's easy to play. Moving up to this F7 with a nine, which is of course using just this voicing an octave higher, so an A half diminished voicing. And you can also recognize that this is this F7 with a nine on top. And then I'm resolving that to B flat major seven and then adding a small fill with uh, this diminished chord on the E flat. This second example is again demonstrating how this version of the voicing where I'm substituting the C from the D also works really well when I'm using the chord as an F7. So first we just get C minor and C minor 9 voicing, so moving to F7. And if you look at the voicing like this, then that's actually an F7 with a 13 because we have the 3rd, 7th, 9th and then the D, the 13. And that's what I'm using here and then just alternating between the 13 and then the fifth in the melody. Then I'm re resolving that to B flat major seven and then further down to E flat major seven. Since we can use the half diminished chord as a dominant voicing, then we can of course also use it as an alter dominant. So if you look at the F7 with a nine, if I play the complete chord with the F, then that's this one. And of course that's A half diminished with F in the bass. And related to F then we have the third, the fifth, the flat seven and the nine. Now if I take the tritone substitution of F, so the B, and then play this chord, then I also have a dominant, but there are some alterations instead of extensions. So we have the seven, the flat seven, the flat nine, the third, even though I've written it out, because I'm relating it to an A half diminished, it's written out as an E flat. On a B chord, it would of course really be a D sharp. And then I have the G, which is a flat 13. So when you're relating a half diminished chord to an altered dominant, then you're playing the half diminished chord on the flat seven of the altered dominant. So in this case, I'm playing an A half diminished over a B. So to get a B7 altered. And if I want to apply this to autumn leaves, a good place to do that would be in the minor cadence. And then the seventh, of D7 is a C, so I'll be playing a C half diminished chord. And that gives me an example like this. This example also illustrates another thing that's really useful with using these half diminished chords because I can actually just move around the same voicing and then play the entire 2-5. So I'm playing this melody on the A half diminished and I'm actually playing the same on the D7 altered, I'm just moving it up a few frets and then playing and then adding this one and resolving down to a G minor 6 9. This example is using a few more inversions of the half diminished voicings. So first just starting with this one for the A half diminished and then on the D7 altered, first this C half diminished and then moving up to this one and resolving to a G minor 6 9. This last example of how you can use a half diminished voicing is really coming out of a voicing that's derived from the half diminished voicings. So we have this E half diminished with an 11 where the 11 is instead of the third. And we can of course look at this as being an E half diminished with an 11 or we can look at it as being a G minor 6 9. But we can also look at it as having a B flat root. So if we do that, then it's flat five on the E or sharp 11, the root B flat, the third, 
uh, D and then the seventh A. So it's essentially just a B flat major seven with a sharp 11 or a flat five. You can use this in the two five one. So a good place to use that would be just the basic first few bars of Autumn Leaves. That would sound like this. So notice that I'm actually using it on the one chord in the 251. And that's because when we have that cadence, then I'm resolving to a B flat major seven and we're kind of not expecting that Lydian sound. So when we start using it, it's more of a surprise and it's a much stronger effect. And of course you would expect it to work really well if we used it on the next chord, the E flat major seven, which would have a Lydian sound in the key, but there it's just gonna be really vague and sound like we're playing the A half diminished that comes a bar later a little bit early. So in this case, we're really setting up the ear to hear a B flat major seven, and then I'm using the B flat major seven sharp 11 like this. Another thing you want to notice is that I'm actually playing an alter dominant on the F7 and the way this resolves is really nice because it just neatly slides up a half step and then resolves to the to the major 7 sharp 11 sound. As you can see, there's a lot of ground covered with these examples. So we can play the half diminished chords, we can play the tonic minor or minor six chords, the dominance and the altered dominance, and also these Lydian major seven sounds. And in fact, if you combine a half diminished voicing set with a minor seven voicing set, then you can play most songs. The only thing you kind of need is the, is the diminished voicings, which are anyway not that difficult to add to it. All the voicings that I'm using in the examples that I'm going over here are drop two voicings, and that's because that's a very common voicing, and it's also a very strong construction. It's easy to work with, and also fairly easy to play. If you want to see a video where I'm really going deeper into using drop two voicings on a song, and also combining it with other types of voicings, then check out this video where I'm going over four different examples of how to come through set and all.